Now, Louise Gluck has won the Nobel Prize for Literature for this year, and the prize is getting back to normal now after two prizes were awarded last year. Following the postponement of the 2018 prize in the wake of a sexual assault scandal close to the historic academy that awards it, we're now joined by Catherine Kadir Clifford from France 24's Culture Desert. Cathy, start off then by telling us a bit more about this year's winner. Okay, so Louise Gluck is an American poet and essayist. She's 77 years old and she's already won some major awards in the US. She's won the Pulitzer Prize and the National Book Award. Let's hear a bit more about why the Academy chose her. Louise Gluck's voice is unmistakable. It is candid and uncompromising and it signals that this poet wants to be understood. But it is also a voice full of humor and biting wit. So Louise Gluck is uh, best known for her lyric poems. Uh, she has an austere tone, a scarce word choice. And uh, she focuses on themes like trauma, radical change, uh, rebirth. Uh, some of her notable works include uh, The Triumph of Achilles and the, the Wild Iris. And she now joins a long list of past laureates, including Ernest Hemingway, uh, Toni Morrison, Albert Camus. Now, the Academy has been the subject of plenty of controversy in recent years. Is this another controversial choice, do you think, or more of a crowd pleaser? So really, there was an expectation that they would go for a female author um, who wasn't from Europe uh, to go some way in, in sort of soothing, ruffled feathers from previous year's uh, controversies. Uh, the choice of Gluck is an important step for the representation of women um, within the laureates. Uh, she's only the 16th woman to win since uh, 1901, so six, 16 out of 117 laureates. Still some work to go there. Um, and Toni Morrison is uh, so far the only black woman to have won, won in 1993. Uh, however, they've again gone for an English speaker, um, even though she's not from Europe. And uh, for an international prize, they're actually quite a lot of parts of the world that haven't been represented as much. Uh, there have been 30 English language winners now, uh, 15 French, and followed by a lot of other European countries. Only one Arab writer has won and only two uh, writers writing in Chinese. Uh, so a step in the right direction, but still some way to go in better representation. Mm. Now, the Historic Swedish Academy has been under a fair bit of pressure to revamp uh, and be more open after three years of scandal. How far is this choice likely then to go in helping repair the rep reputation of the Academy? Yeah, so the, the sexual assault scandal in 2017 also sort of shone a light, the spotlight on, on the more traditionalist views at the heart of this sort of ancient academy. And it, it sparked the resignation of several members where so there really was an upheaval there. And the Nobel Foundation warned that it might actually hand the prize over to, to a different group if, um, the organi if the academy didn't take radical steps in moving towards a sort of more openness, di diversity, transparency. Uh, so we obliged five uh, external experts to be brought in to help vet candidates for, for this year and last year. Um, and two of them actually quit after last year's announcement because they said their views weren't taken into account. Um, last year got off to quite a bad start in terms of repairing reputation. The Austrian author Peter Hanke, um, he's minimized Serbian atrocities uh, in, the, in the Balkans wars. Uh, so for many people, giving such a prestigious prize to him was, was in a way uh, giving some sort of legitimacy to these offensive opinions. So uh, this year, less controversial. Uh, Gluck, to my knowledge, hasn't uh, made any offensive political statements. <laughs> And how does a prize like this change the life of a writer? Uh, so, of course, there's the prestigious value. Uh, you get a diploma and a medal. Uh, then there's the tangible result in, in book sales and in, in the author's profile, a um, massive boost to their public profile. Uh, there's also a, a major cash envelope uh, which comes with the prize. This year it's worth around €950,000. Not bad. Um, on a different note, we're going to end uh, here in Paris on the banks of the River Seine. Yes, if you visited the French capital, you've, you've no doubt seen the, the little book stalls or maybe browsed, browsed among them that are dotted along the Seine. Uh, these are called the bouquinistes and uh, these vendors really depend on tourism. So uh, like millions of other people in the world, they're really feeling the strain um, caused by the COVID-induced economic crisis. Wassim uh, Cornet reports. 
They are one of Paris's most iconic and most treasured features, and anyone who has strolled along the Seine has seen them, and some have even bought something from them. In fact, the bouquinistes, the booksellers that line the river for three kilometers, are such an important part of the city's history that they are declared a part of France's national intangible heritage. But as is the case around the world, tourism in the French capital has screeched to a halt, and that has had a severe impact on Paris's bouquinistes. Jérôme Calais has been doing the job for almost 30 years, one of the city's 227 booksellers who sell second-hand books, old magazines and engravings along the river. He says life on the riverbank is a bit like a drug. But sales have plummeted and these days he worries about how many colleagues may never reopen their bookshelves. L'impact du Covid sur notre profession, c'est très simple. Une majorité de mes collègues vivaient pour beaucoup au jour le jour de la vente, c'est-à-dire que c'était ça garantissait le sandwich, voire un petit peu plus. Despite the downturn, Jérôme says he'll keep doing his job. Nulle part au monde, vous n'avez une librairie à ciel ouvert de cette importance, avec autant de libraires, autant de surfaces occupées, autant de livres proposés. C'est vraiment une chose qui n'existe qu'à Paris. And for that reason alone, the people behind these symbols of Paris's riverbanks hope book lovers from around the world can soon return to the city of lights. All right, that's it for culture. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you for watching. That's it for me for now. Do stay tuned for sports.